Alright, let's do this. Get set. Headed for the open door. This is Running Flat Radio with Chris Yuzinski on AM 800 CKLW, the information station. Let's let's let, let's let's get to our, our first guest in, in in studio, and um, you know, in in two thousand and nine, I was right next to the young man who died um, in the half marathon at Detroit, mm-hmm. and that was the year that three people had died. I remember that from from uh, from sudden deaths on ca- sudden cardiac issues, and uh, that really changed my life as a runner when that occurred. But you know what's um, interesting about that was when I got back to uh, back home, I had people saying to me, why would you want to run? Why would you want to run? Yeah. You have three people died during a race. You know, that's going to happen to you. That's a silly thing that you're doing. And that's what's going to be interesting about our guest tonight. He's going to be able to kind of uh, talk to us a bit about that. I, I've been in meetings as a race director with police, with senior police officials, where we talk about a marathon or a half marathon or, or a 10K course. And the police official, as I actually said, right to my face, well, why are we even wasting our time with this? People die in these things. Yeah. Let's just let's just say no and go away. Mm-hmm. And it's the wrong attitude to have. Uh, our sport is a great sport. It's a healthy sport. It's where um, we're also a very accepting sport. It doesn't matter whether you walk it or run it or, mm-hmm. or, or you know, if you're super fast or super slow, we don't care. Yep. Uh, it's all about getting you off the couch, getting you in the 5K, getting you... Uh, more healthy and and giving you a better quality of life. And to talk about that is uh, is an old friend of ours, uh, Dr. Tarhuni from uh, the Canadian Cardiac Center. He uh, we we met a number of years ago when when you were pioneering the cardio phone, and and you brought the cardio phone to Run for Heroes Marathon for the World Alzheimer's Day Run for Heroes Marathon three years ago, and 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 that to me. And I and I mark my words because we talk yes. to a lot of industry people that will revolutionize our sport in it within this decade. Um, I actually had the opportunity in that race to wear one of your phones, absolutely. which I Kelly. thought that was kind of interesting talking to you afterwards about yeah. you know having it on what it showed yes. you about and how did that work? Like I had the device on me during the race, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and what was what was yeah. coming back to you? Uh, absolutely. First of all, uh, thanks, Chris and uh, Kelly, for the opportunity to. Uh, to educate the, the people, uh, the would like them to be more active, and it's, it's first of all, uh, I think exercise and running is very important, and uh, everyone should continue to run and exercise. We'll go back to 2009, and this background about the cardio phone, why we get interesting with cardio phone. 2009, uh, we are there, and we see within 16 minutes, there is 26 years old, 36 years old, and 65 years old marathon who died suddenly within 16 minutes on the bridge, just next door to our uh, Windsor Cardiac Center. It was shocking for us. I know uh, uh, me and my team, there's something wrong. We should do better than this. We should be preventing uh, uh, sudden cardiac death. So we thought to get a team uh, from US and from uh, University of Windsor, and we did our R&D research development, and we thought that uh, we need to do better job than this. So we went to the company in US and worked with them, and we, we, we thought that if we're able to monitor the athlete while he's running Mm -hmm. real time and getting the ECG signal, the cardiac signal to central monitoring stations, we might able to stop that high risk victim from running and we might preventing sudden death. It took about three years to get things uh, around uh, uh, September 2012, actually in the history, Chris and Kayla, as you know, this is the first time in the history uh, we able to get a clear signal from marathon runner real time while he or she running. Now on your end, what kind of things were you seeing? Were you seeing spikes in that? Absolutely. The the victim unfortunately before had the uh, sudden cardiac death, there's a lot of abnormal electric signal. Well, actually the heart transmit a lot of abnormal signals before he went flat. Takes about probably an hour or half an hour before sudden death. Really? So if we're able to detect those early signs early abnormal electric signal were able to preventing death. Mm-hmm. And what a cardio phone work, actually it's a very small device, uh, can be used for clinical practice, it's been proved in Canada for many years, and we use it for our patient where the, the person will, uh, will wear the device and connect it through the SIM card, through the antenna, through the satellite technology, and we have uh, at Windsor Cardiac Center 24-7 monitoring stations where we're able to monitor the patient heart. So every single heartbeat counts. Mm-hmm. And if we identify any abnormal beat, 
we're able to actually go back to the patient and we'll tell him, listen, something wrong there. And we have tremendous success. Actually, today, just two patients I called in from home because they have abnormal electric signal and uh, yeah. we start the medication, otherwise you're gonna have a stroke. Now, you know, as runners, we're, we're very stubborn people. We yes. run through everything. Um, if I don't have a cardio phone on me, yes. how do I know that, that sure. you know, I'm kind of in danger of, of pushing it too far? Absolutely. If you look at what we do now, uh, just look at the stat. Uh, Chris told me we don't have much stat. And that's right. We have some stat. If you look at the, uh, the Canadian stat, for example, we have every, uh, probably every 15 minutes, there's Canadian somewhere who have sudden cardiac death. Wow. It's a lot. Four per hour. 40,000 per year. Is that and number it, going up? Uh, actually, unfortunately, it's bad. the bad news is uh, the CDC, which is the Central Disease uh, Agency in the U.S., is going up in three in two, in three people, actually, three group of people. Unfortunately, young women are going up 30% sudden death. Really? Wow. Yeah. And uh, young people between 18 and 30, about uh, 10%. And the African-American is going up. So the sudden cardiac death going up in young uh, women and young athletes because they, uh, they have um, one of the major reasons, because actually there is, as you know, Chris and Kelly, there is more number of people now running and exercise than 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is there. So what we need to do, if you look at the now the new society called SHAPE, which is American society called Society of Heart Attack, which is Southern Cardiac Death Equivalent Prevention and Eradication, SHAPE. They have a guideline. And if you look at the guideline now, any person over 45 male or 55 female plus one risk factor or young person with two risk factors should be screened for heart disease. Now, when you're saying a risk factor, what's a risk Those factor? are five common risk factors, which is hypertension, mm -hmm. high blood pressure, diabetes, smoker, high cholesterol, family history of heart disease. Okay. Mm. So for the audience, if any, anyone has one or two of these risk factors, should go to her or his family doctor, ask for screening, how it can be screened. The other, the other fact is very bad, actually. If you look at the most common presentation symptoms, how people present with heart problem, 50% prevent with sudden death. So wow. <laughs> sudden death is the most common presentation of heart disease. And it's too late. It's too late. It's way too late. You're, too late. You're, you're 50%. Dead. <laughs> so actually, we don't see those people. Uh, uh, that's why at, at Windsor Cardiac Center, you ask me, do you go a lot of the hospital? I mean, not much, because I think we need to preventing the people go to the hospital. Because if we wait for the patient to come to the emergency room, you have only 50% of them. They don't see the other half. And that's why now, even the, the, the North America, Canada, American Society of Cardiology and Canadian Psychiatry, we do a lot about prevention. Right. Uh, acute treatment is important, but prevention is more important. So I think the message is very simple. If anyone has one or more risk factors, which is high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, family histories, smoker, should see their family doctors. And we do screening for heart disease before involved into kind of very strenuous exercise like a marathon run or half marathon. Now, what does screening involve? It's very simple. And we start the screening process actually for athletes and for general public. Involve a questionnaire, simple questionnaire to ask. Then do simple uh, a cardiac test. Start with simple ECG. Mm -hmm. And if you find something abnormal, we can go to the ultrasound of the heart. Um, maybe you have congenital heart disease, something wrong with the muscle of the heart. And then if you have any abnormality, we can go to the stress test. And uh, we're here in, in Windsor, we pioneer stress echoes which is a diagnostic test, mixture of a treadmill and echo, taking a picture of the heart while the person running on a treadmill, and it's very, very diagnostic. Okay. So it's a combination of questionnaire, simple ECGs, ultrasound of the heart, or stress echoes. So, so when we come back, I want to talk about that. I want to go back to the cardio phone, and I also yes. want to talk about how that's revolutionizing uh, the entire industry. And, uh, and so we'll be right back with, uh, with Dr. Tarhouni, from the Canadian Cardiac Center, you're listening to Running Flat Radio on AM800 CKLW.